I respect that. Can you guys hear me and, uh, and uh, see my screen? Yes, coach. All right, what's going on? So, yeah, I'm, uh, like Coach Banks said, I'm the head coach at Westlake High School. I've been there for two years now. Before that, I was in South Florida. School called Suncoast High School. And uh, basically, you know, five or six years ago, we started to transition more to 11 personnel type teams. And we we're really, really heavy in, in power. But over the last two or three years, we've kind of transitioned more to a, to a GT and a GH type team. And really a lot of that is because, you know, we're more spread than we were then. And also it's hard to find that kind of ass kicker to play your sniffer all the time. And I think that the and we'll talk about it more, but I think that the pull and, and get to the backer is a lot easier for a, for a sniffer kid than uh, kicking out a, a defensive end all the time. So I'm going to go through these pretty quick. These are just kind of tags and variations on how we run uh, first counter tray and just kind of some motions and some different formations and things like that we run it out of. Um, so, so counter tray, this is the basic like day one install. We run it out of two back. Um, for us, this would be called split left. And then, you know, there's not really any secrets. If you have any uh, questions or whatever, we can talk more later. But um, for us, we go girls' names are left and guys' names are to the right. So for us, this is Hillary, you know, kind of the old hog play. So basically, we're going to get a uh, down block on the front side and we're going to kick from the guard and then a pull to the um, front side backer from the tackle. Um, so again, I'm going to go through this pretty fast and you can stop me if you have any questions or whatever because um, – we run it a lot. Over the last five years, we've averaged about 275 yards on the ground, and about 60% of our run plays are, are some form of counter. So uh, we run it a lot. Um, so this is, you'll see, you know, kind of throughout the years, us running it and how we've tweaked it. So again, this for us is split. So the basic blocking scheme, obviously, the running back is going to come across in the counter, and he's going to kick or block the backside end. Okay, um, basically the only thing that ever changes on how we block this is how we account for that backside end. Um, we can read them, we can block them with the quarterback, we can jet them, so on and so forth. So um, as you see, we want to pull and kick the first thing outside. So usually the C-gap player from our guard, and then we want to loop inside of the front side backer. Um, the running back is supposed to hit it tight, but in Georgia at least, I mean, most teams are big spill teams. So, so a lot of times it doesn't really hit like this. It usually typically actually hits outside and they kind of end up exchanging it. And um, a lot of people usually ask the question, you know, is, is that difficult? Um, we just we just practice the hell out of it and, and, and go from there. So most of these have end zone shot. This one doesn't. Um, so as you can see here, this one has actually has to, this one actually bounces. And this is typically what you get from it. Um, he's going to most people call it a log. He actually just falls down. But um, the pulling tackle is going to get his eyes up for the front side backer. Okay, uh, front side backer ends up getting him in a wash, but he ends up catching him here. So it's actually a pretty good job, even though it's probably the least physical thing you've ever seen. Um, and then we just read the kick out. So end zone shot is pretty bad on this one, but the next ones are pretty good. So if we start getting into some variations, um, this this particular year in 2018, we were a lot of two back. We had three really good running backs actually, and our two starting running backs tore their ACL. But um, we just kind of how big, how big were they? How big were the running backs? What was that? How big how were big your running, running backs, backs uh, starting uh, uh, speed, speed versus, versus size? size. Uh, well, yeah. Go ahead. The, they were the one running back was probably about 5'10, 190, and the other one was probably about 5'9, 175. I mean, um, the thing about it, and like you'll see, I always use this clip as an example. Like, uh, it doesn't, we, to me, like running backs are pretty easy to find, at least the places that I've coached. Uh, and this is a pretty, if you, if you block it correctly, I mean, you'll see on this play, like this, this running back that has the ball is really, really special. He rushed for 1,000 yards in seven games and then tore his ACL on actually the run that he went over a thousand yards. But uh, if you block it correctly, and I'll show you on the end zone, uh, I mean, pretty much anybody could do this. And this is how it's supposed to hit. So we get our guard pull kick, okay, inside shoulder. Um, and then we get our tackle pull up for the front side backer. Um, he's going to take a short counter step here. And then obviously the opposite running back is responsible for that end. Okay, so the tailback here on the left side, um, he's going to take a short counter step and then he's going to come back. Um, what we did with the backs, if you saw before, we just stacked them because we got into to a couple tendencies where um, this, was our, this was our stretch guy and this was our lead blocker. 
So we wanted to stack them and kind of hide it. And these are kind of some of the variations that I'll talk about as we go through. Uh, but as you can see, I mean, like I said, this kid is very special. But if you got six in the box, I mean, uh, this is pretty. This is pretty much stealing. One more here out of split back, and I'll show some variations. So again, you know, obviously, I would think most people are reading guards, but every time we run this, at least the first couple times, you see that you see them start shuffling towards the first back, um, and that's what we want. We just we we want the misdirection. All we want them to do is take one false step, and then we're usually good. And again, we'll show it from the end zone here. This is our third string running back that year. Uh, he's pretty special, but as you can see, he hits it tight. Okay, we get a down block. Um, we get a decent kick. Again, it's not very physical. He's, he fits him up a little. I liked him to get inside of him, but uh, he fits him up. And then the, the backside tackle does a great job on the front side backer. And again, this is the way it's supposed to look. It's supposed to be hit tight. Um, the running back, all he has to do is get inside of him on the backside here on this block and cut off the end. He does a good job at it. Hit it tight. All right, so now some variations. Um, and, uh, Banks, how do I pull up this question thing? I see some question things coming in, but. If you can, I'll feed them to you as okay. we can go along. No questions yet. Um, uh, I thought I saw something clicking, so. It did, yet. go ahead though. So this is a variation. So I said, again, the biggest difference that happens when you get into two back or, uh, or sorry, into a one back is you got to account for the backside end. All right, so in this particular, uh, we, we account for it by optioning him. So the quarterback, if he squeezes hard and he can make the tackle on the play, he's going to pull it and pitch it. Um, the running back actually drops it but gets lucky with the bounce. Okay, so again, now the quarterback is reading this backside in. So in one back, you got to figure out a way to account for him. And, and for us, because the, backs, the back is optioning, this is one back for us. Quarterback feels like he can make a play, all right? Uh, feels like the end can make a play on the back, so he's going to pitch it out, okay? Um, People have run this in, in triple as a like a triple option too, where you know he's going to pull it and go off it. We just pitch off of him. Um, we're not a big option team, so we don't invest a ton of time into it. But um, and again, I'm going to go through these pretty fast just to show you all the variations, and then we can go back and ask for questions. Okay, um, for us, this is called choice. The next one, so that was option. The next one is choice. Uh, choice. We can tear motion into it, okay, or we can do it regular split back. Um, and this, we just kind of give him numbers keys, the quarterback. So if he feels like he has the numbers, uh, then he's going to throw the ball every single time as long as we call it choice. So right here, he has three on two. Okay, it's a hold, so it gets called back. All right, but for the offensive line, it's just they're running their Henry play. All right, quarterback has numbers. So for us, we have one, two, and then he's going to be the third. So if, if – and they're in a bear front, but if one of these backers would jump out, then we'd hand the ball off. Blocking-wise for a bear front, just real quick, I mean, it just turns into man blocking. Um, a lot of teams have tried to do bear fronts against us, but as long as you basically fit people up, um, it usually works out for you. Um, again, yeah, we, we all want people who kick people's ass, but um, that's not always realistic. All right, so moving into one back, this is kind of like the base one back way we run it um, with a jet and a counter on the backside. Again, how do we hold the end? Um, for us, it depends on the week, but – um, if we can hold you with the jet, if we can hold the defensive end with the jet, we're going to do that. Um, so for us, this would just be jet Hillary. Okay. Again, you want to hit it tight. Um, guard does a good job here being physical, sticking his head in there. And really because of the jet motion, um, the tackle doesn't have anybody to block. Um, he ends up turning back and chipping him. But um, so again, this is kind of the base one back way we like to run it with a jet motion to, to, to hold that backside tackle or hold that backside in, sorry. Um, again, same thing. Okay, guard does a really good job picking up the first thing outside. All right, and tackle turns his shoulders a little bit. We like to be a little more of a skip pull, but uh, he gets the right guy. 
as you can see, like, and again, this is man coverage, so people are running all over the place. Um, and it does hit wider um, in this situation because um, basically because the guard, you know, reaches the backer. All right, then we can also go, and this is probably my favorite way to run it if you have an athletic quarterback, is to run it with the quarterback. So for us, this would be Henry Me. Okay, so now um, the quarterback basically is the second back. Okay, we're going to fake the jet. And again, I know I'm going through this fast, and I'll go back, or I can answer any questions later. So again, against, against a team that spills pretty heavy, this is kind of the way it's going to look. Uh, the guard does a really good job here of logging him. Um, but as you can see, because of the backfield motion, the front side backer runs away from the play. So if you watch him, and yeah, I, I get he's taught to read pullers, and he should be going right to the play, but he's a 16, 17-year-old kid. He still has no idea where the ball is. Okay, I don't have an end zone of this one. Okay, terrible job by the guard, but at least their defensive end gets upfield. As you can see, though, their backers run away from the play because of the backfield motion. Do you have a call for your quarterback or for your running back and who's getting the ball to the, to the so, uh, pulling side? So we, we've, we've read it before, um, but typically we just call it. So, like, you know, if we were running this regular to the back, we call it Hillary. So out of one back, like right now, if we call it a Hillary, the back would come to the left, and the quarterback would block that right side defensive end. But if we call Hillary me, they just switch responsibilities. Um, so this is Hillary me. Um, so we literally just pat our chest, and that means the quarterback's running the ball. Well, that's what we've done in the past. But um, So this is called uh, in this situation. We have read it, but we just have more success when we call it, being honest. Um, Okay, this is out of our, like, so basically our day one install, this is our main formation. We call it West. This is the H back here. You know, for this season, he was a fullback type kid. We've had different type kids. Um, and this is just a kind of different backfield motion. We wanna, we're we going to fake the stretch, and then we're going to run the counter underneath it. Uh, we do this for, for teams who, who key the H. Um, again, if we're running a ton of power at you, a lot of teams are going to try to slant to the H or things like that. Um, Quarterback does a good job tucking it underneath. Um, they're so far upfield, uh, I don't really know if this guard needs to block him on the pull. Okay, Tackle does a good job uh, turning, squaring his hips, and fitting up that front side backer. And, like, this quarterback isn't super athletic, I would say. He's, he's a, definitely the least athletic quarterback that I've coached. But uh, he does a good job staying patient okay, and following his blockers. All right, last – I think this is the last one here, and then we'll get to GH. Um, so this is out of empty. Um, we love running the ball out of empty, and, and one of the biggest ways we do it is out of counter or counter trade with the quarterback. So, again, to me, it's about, it's about this movement right here is, is why, we're, why we really run this play. And why we like why I like it with the quarterback. So just kind of a side note, if he's head up here, this tackle is taught to kind of just stay square instead of bury his head. Um, if he's head up and he wants to fit him up, we'll take him down. Um, otherwise, we'll let the puller take care of him. All right. Oh, this is kind of one different way we run it just to get the two back. Uh, we'll motion, uh, T back motion, give it a different key. All 
All right, so now our, uh, our, our GH, or we call it Carl counter. Um, so, again, like it's hard to find an ass kicker here that's going to be able to kick out defensive ends all night. Um, so what we're going to do is, you know, basically, again, the standard power. He's going to pull for frontside backer, okay, and then we're going to pull and kick with the tackle – or, sorry, with the, the backside guard. Everybody on the front side is down blocking. We, there's been years where we don't run any zone, but, I mean, when we, we're pretty much like – probably 80% gap scheme um, throughout the five or six years we've been doing this. Um, the, again, the big thing is it's, it's hard to find a, an ass kicker for that sniffer position. And also, um, you know, at least against a four man front, you're almost guaranteed to run it to the, to the one tech when you run this. Um, so we've done different things with our H again, this is kind of the basic way we run it. Day one install would be, this would just be called West Carl. Um, one of our, our habits or our tendencies is we, when we jump, this, this motion is called jump, we're gonna run power read to the strength. So we'll jump and then run counter back. So again, like we, we, we understand our tendencies and sometimes we create our tendencies on purpose and this is a tendency breaker for us. Um, again, not very physical by the pulling guard. Um, Let's see the end zone shot. But a good job by the running backs st sticking it inside. Um, really, the, the fullback here, the sniffer, is supposed to read his back. So he's actually supposed to take a counter step. Uh, he doesn't take a very good counter step right here. He should shuffle one, two to give this guard some space for his pull kick, and then he can basically read the, the block. Um, they do a better job, kind of. This this kid in this film does a better job of it. So he slow plays, then he's going to fit back up inside, and he's going to block first color as a sniffer. This kid is really kind of the reason why we started going to it. He's about 6'3". Uh, he's really a receiver, but we played him at sniffer just to be more multiple. Uh, he's a matchup inside, uh, so we felt in the past game we really couldn't replace him, but he was not going to be – he was about 6'3", probably 190 pounds, so he was not going to be an ass kicker. Um, you know, he was just gonna be able to fit you up. So for him, um, this was much better for us. It still hits downhill, um, still a physical play. You know, as you know, again, I'm a big power guy, still a physical play. Um, they get you downhill quick. Uh, backfield motion for this, uh, we change our backfield motions a lot, but this is basically, uh, it's the same footwork for us as zone, um, as the way we were, we were on zone at least. And most of these have end zones, so I'll try to go more to the end zone. Again, same thing. Uh, most teams, okay, we're going to end up logging this end. Okay, so it's really going to hit outside a lot of times, uh, which is fine because, as you can see with the counter step, if he's, if he's cross king, he's going to shuffle over a little bit and it's going to hold him enough. All right, let me get to more. So again, jump motion for us. That signals like we're going power read. Then we hit it back out the back door. Sniffer in this situation does a great job getting his eyes around for the front side backer. Oh, that's not the right play. All right, so here's some variations. Let me get to some variations because I know. Okay, this is out of a pro set. You do a fake motion, okay. Guarantee basically that you're gonna get a three tech or you're gonna get the strength to the opposite side on the tight end. And let me get here. And then last two or last three are quarterback counterplays. 
So we've run this both ways, but we're gonna get a tear motion here. Again, he's gonna count the numbers. Okay, in this situation, it was a safety. If the safety flies, he's gonna run the ball. We've run it both ways where we run counter back to the tear motion or we run counter away from the tear motion. So again, quarterback counter, doesn't change anything up front. Um, he sees the safety fly away. Okay, he knows we have good enough numbers in the box. We don't block a defensive end very well on this, but our quarterback makes a play. So everybody's fitted up. And we have the numbers in the box because the safety ran away. No other clip for you to show, huh? No other clip? Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry, this is it. This is actually. And then we have the quarterback counter option. Okay, uh, basically the same principle as the GT. Okay, we're gonna give a stretch fake. All right. So I know I went through it pretty quick. I know I went through it pretty quick, but uh, it's almost 10 o'clock, so I wanted to leave time if anyone wanted some questions or anything like that. Guys, got any questions for Coach May on uh, the variations of, of counter? Yes, yes. Uh, Coach, what's your variation on reading that back side in? Sorry. Hold Jeremy, on. Coach? Uh, no, what would you say? Sorry. Um, what all variations of reading the back side in do you do with the QB run game? Um, so on the GT – uh, we can option him, right? So if we go, if, if like in the two-back situation, we can option him and we can even run triple option. We haven't really done that a, a bunch, but uh, let me see if I can go back here. I mean, are, are you arcing for the backside linebacker at all to get a lead block behind that, that end if he's squeezing real hard? Have you ever done that? No, well, at a one back, at a one back, we'll read the end, and if he, and if he squeezes down, we'll pull it. Um, but we right. will only run that to like duo, so the slot receiver can block that backer. Um, and this, like, when we run option out of it, we don't triple option it. We just he pitches it right away if he squeezes. Um, but okay. in one back, we'll run it to a two by two set usually, um, or we'll we can crack, some, but usually to a two by two set so that like if there's a back here. Um, and he crashed, then he would, yeah, he would arc for that backer. Okay. Yeah, that, that answered the question. Appreciate it. Yep. Do we have any other questions for uh, Coach May? Hey, Coach, I got a quick question for you. Mm -hmm. What's up? So you know you remember how we used to run the done formation? Yeah. If you're trying to hide a guard that's not as athletic, would you recommend running it out of done? Uh, it depends. I mean, because it, to me, if I have a guard that's less athletic than I want the one, it's hard to tell. I mean, I know you don't have much choice, but – uh, I don't know that formation in particular with a yeah it could help um, but with uh, he's talking about basically just so everybody knows he's talking about two by two with, with a with a tight end and a sniffer and then two receivers on the other side um, yeah I don't, I don't know um, I don't really know how I would answer that question to be honest with you you can call me and we'll figure it out all right <laughs> All right, guys. Well, if there's no other questions, I'm going to get ready to end this meeting. As I said, I want to thank Coach Morrison and Coach May. They left their contact information. You can also find them on the uh, in the Facebook group and leave a message. I will upload this uh, Zoom, hopefully tonight, but if not tonight, first thing tomorrow while I'm reading my emails from my uh, county officials.
So there goes Coach May's contact information um, again for you guys. All right, guys, I want to thank everybody for the call. And as always, uh, keep taking this time to stay safe and grow as professionals. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.